In today's episode, Returning to Coaster Spotlight, we are featuring a massive wooden gnarler coaster with nearly one kilometer of track, 52 miles per hour, a drop of 30 meters, several airtime counts and airtime durations, all built within a mini park area. So it is a park map coaster with some surrounding flat rides, some built-in scenery, a nice queue walk, and all the bells and whistles. An absolutely fantastic coaster to kick off the return of Coaster Spotlights. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Hey yo, my pole and coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to the return of Coaster Spotlight. In today's episode, we're gonna be looking at Drake, created by ATRX. And here they say Drake is a realistic gravity group wooden coaster with an intense twisty layout the park file contains a small lightly themed area the coaster sits in that also includes two flat rides a restaurant and a children's playground so this is an unfamiliar name to me so if you're watching this video atrx please do come join us on discord get registered and keep on building keep on having fun but as you guys can see from the background footage this looks like an absolutely amazing wooden coaster layout and as the return of coaster spotlights would Wooden coaster being one of my favorites this one definitely stood out to me and i figured hey we're gonna start things over hit that reset button why not start with a classic with that of a wooden coaster so looking really fantastic can't wait to dive in further so why don't we do just that okay welcome welcome ladies and gentlemen to another coaster spotlight return so we are uh kicking things off with reshade I have adjusted my settings in a way that I think is better than I had before. And I'm, I'm really quite happy how it looks. Definitely want to use it on these tighter, more intricate projects where we definitely want to see those details pop a little bit better. So as you can see, we have a little bit of a flat ride here. We have a bit of a theme park as well. Some really crazy overbanking turns on this wooden coaster. Very twisty as they described. I mean, it looks sensational. A uh, little, little, almost like a little Viking longhouse here. Nice little art style. All of these uh, panels individually placed one by one. So quite a heavy apart count with 1300 pieces. So not slouching on the surrounding theming, considering the focus of this was just to make a nice coaster. Not only did you accomplish building a nice coaster, but you made a nice little playground, a nice little themed area for the guests to walk around some beautiful garden work benches it's looking fantastic really really well done we got a little pirate ship going on over here so i guess there's a i guess a bit of a viking theme going there's like a viking ship and a little viking longhouse over there let's go see what the boarding station looks like but not slouching on the scenery whatsoever. This is what I love to see from a coaster spotlight, guys. Not just, hey, I made a coaster layout, check it out. But a few extra things for us to look at. Wow, look at this queue. It is packed. Uh, it's I'm really curious. 1,400 people in this park. Majority of them are in this queue, as you can tell. I think we're going to have to cut line here a little bit. Some great views. We've got a little swampy area going on over here. I like the addition of fog. It's looking really nice. Yeah, beautiful layout on this wooden coaster. Love to see it. Like the flat ride in the background creates a nice little focal point. Anchors everything. Interesting wall work here. It's gorgeous. Here's the coaster coming in through the drive tires here. Coming through a little uh, maintenance area, transfer tracks, very cool. All right, let's take a look at today's coaster's statistics. I'm gonna have to turn reshade off for this so we can take a look at this. 120 seconds in duration. The track length is almost a kilometer, as mentioned at the top of the video. 52 miles per hour is the max speeds with average speeds of 18 miles an hour. Biggest drop, almost 30 meters. And some good airtime counts on this. Really, really good stuff. Why don't we uh, jump right on into it? I think we're gonna kick things off with a good old seat view and uh, we'll try out a couple other perspectives. I definitely want to ride the back of the track so we'll probably do that next. Let's get to it.
absolutely phenomenal design on that coaster there. I really like the heavy, heavy bank turns. Like, there was even a couple outward bank bunny hills that were quite nice. Very wavy, intricate layout. Weaves in and, in and out of itself very nicely. Really, really well done. Look at all this little uh, cobbies and realism. Superb details. All of this gone into one singular coaster. Absolutely amazing. Let's check out a couple different perspectives and then look at it from a bird's eye view. Wow, definitely preferred that perspective a bit more. Get a bit of that whipping of the riding the back of the coaster. Always love to ride the back myself, but uh, front and the back, it's got to be the best, right? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see if we have any nighttime lighting on this. Definitely have some in the boarding station itself. Uh, not too much, but... We can go ahead and give it a nighttime run. Maybe we'll do like a track view and get a, a feel for that track a little bit closer. Let's try it out. Not, not too bad at all. Definitely because of the uh, moon lighting, the little bit of lighting that we have in the scene with the lampposts around, a couple spotlights, but that moonlight coming in definitely gave us enough light to make that a very fun and atmospheric adventure for nighttime. Let's zoom out and take a look at the overarching park, all well lit as well, and switching it over to daytime here. As you can see, this crater put a lot of effort into not just the layout of the coaster and really pushing and exaggerating those features making a beautifully designed coaster layout here there's a top-down view of it all i mean absolutely amazing but they also put a ton of effort into just making it feel like it's lived in right 
feels like this area has been built out. It's a vertical slice of a theme park and it creates for a very fun and beautiful presentation. Absolutely love everything about this. This is a five out of five for me, 100%. And as mentioned, ATRX is a name that I do not recognize. So come join us on the Discord. And that goes to everybody. Come join us on Discord. We still have a thriving Discord community. It's almost seven years into Planet Coaster. Still new, new people joining all the time. Still doing fun community events, collabs, and all that. So there's always something for you to do if you uh, are new to the game or you are a veteran of the game. And if you're just sitting there wondering, hey, I really like Park Beyond, but it, it's in a bit of a buggy state right now. Well, until that gets fixed, I definitely recommend you trying your hand at Planet Coaster. And uh, there's a whole community here waiting to help you get better at the game. So links in the description below for Discord, as well as everything else. And we'll put a link to this creator's creation down in the description below if you want to go check it out for yourself. And there you guys go. I thought this was an amazing creation. What did you think? Leave your comments down below. And this is our first episode of Coaster Spotlight for the return as we took a little bit of a break for Project Planko and Park Beyond. I'm going to try to bring you guys at least one or two Coaster Spotlights a week going forward. So hope you guys enjoyed the first of many more to come, even though this is episode 1030. <laughs> Lots of coasters featured on this channel. So if you haven't gotten enough, go check the playlist. There's a thousand more episodes just like this. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for me in today's episode of Coaster Spotlight. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.